Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox, Syncrable Space Program 1.12 with Real Solar System. I have to say that because I'm also doing Realism Overhaul with JNSQ. In this video, I am testing the automated landing on the surface of Mars of the Mini-Q lander, uh, also known as the Miku for short, and it is automated using KOS. As you can see there, the KOS script is started. We are in a circular orbit. I just cheated into orbit for simplicity's sake and consistency, of course. But we're a little bit off in terms of inclination from the target, and so there's a minor, minor correction that has to do in order to turn towards the target, but it's not huge. And mostly we are in line. So here is the retro burn. The target is in fact the Mars settlement that I introduced in the JNSQ RO video. And so it is basically two domes that are connected with a tunnel with a bunch of structures inside of it. And I have placed that as a Kerbal Construct static on the surface of Mars and we need to land at it. So I've got the coordinates for it of course and the script knows about the coordinates and will try to get as close as possible. But I've limited how much it can do in order to get there. And I might free up some of that because first we have to make sure that it stays balanced and it does, doesn't go out of control, right? Uh, we don't want it rolling too much so that it goes out of whack. And I've already had to put these uh, control surfaces, well, basically fins on it in order to make sure that it stays stable. And those are where they need to be in order to make that happen. And... Here we are coming in. So as it goes long and has to pitch down, I found this out the hard way because it kept stalling at 35 kilometers. It went completely out of control very suddenly. And it turns out that I needed to pitch down to make sure it maintained control. The side effect of that is that when we release the parachutes at 18 kilometers, and um, we do that pretty high because A, this is Valles Marineris, so it is one of the lower points on the surface of Mars. And B, we're already going very slowly at that point. So we should probably go with the parachutes because aerodynamically it's not going to be able to hold itself for very much longer. But because we have to pitch down, when we release the parachutes, it then jerks up a lot. So I'm going to have to tweak the parachutes somehow in order to limit how much that happens. Or we can push the edge of how much it pitches up so it doesn't end up jerking and then rocking back and forth like this. It ultimately settles down, as you can see, but we want this to all look smooth. I wish I could do it without the parachutes, but then we would have to light the engines very early on. And here in Val Valles Marineris, it's going to take a longer time to get to the surface, so we'll be wasting a lot of fuel, and I'd like to come down with maybe less fuel than this, so we need to be able to land with as little propellant as possible. Uh, so with the parachutes, we get to about 60 meters per second. I think I told them to be tuned for 48, but anyway, we let go of the parachutes and then the engines do their thing. And so here we are on engine power. Uh, I need to tweak the landing a little bit. It ends up going sort of sideways, which is awkward. And I don't know why. Uh, it really, at this point, shouldn't be increasing its horizontal speed, but it does. And then, But we are on skids, so... It's sort of all right, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, that's why we're on skids, uh, so that it can deal with that. Anyway, that was not close to the base. That was about 24 kilometers off. So I tried again. Uh, one of the problems was that uh, in the script, I had forgotten a little addition to its where it's supposed to point. They're telling it where it's supposed to point. There is a heading correction that goes along with the roll that it does in order to try and get to the target. So along the way, when it's in the atmosphere, it rolls towards the target in order to try to get to it. But there's also a yaw that goes with that. And so it wasn't yawing, basically. So I fixed that so that maybe we could get a little bit closer. I also tweaked the trajectory numbers a little bit. It's not doing like a, cor a, a calculation based on drag or anything for the, mo for the most part because the atmosphere is so thin and that was really bad deployment of the parachutes there. Because the atmosphere is so thin, uh, there isn't much drag. It's, it's basically like landing on the moon until you get to maybe 50 kilometers. And at that point, it starts getting a little bit more relevant. But by that time, you're pretty close. So you better get the early part of the trajectory right. 
And of course, once we're on parachutes, we have no choice either. So that's a bit of an issue. If we could land without parachutes, maybe we could nudge it towards the settlement. As you, know, you can see the settlement there. I haven't color corrected the surface yet. Um, frankly, Mars looks very different depending on where you are in the whole business. Uh, from higher up, it really, really looked like the surface of the sun. And then from orbit, it looks properly orange. So it starts out orange, then it looks like the surface of the sun, and then has this tan look to it. And anyway, I'll try and adjust that later. But for now, since I want to see where it is from a long distance away, I decided to keep it so that it stands out. So it's got a yellowy surface. All right, well, we landed about five kilometers off, so I tweaked a little bit more, right? Uh, it's not doing any fundamental calculations based on energy or drag here. It's just, as uh, James Studios would say, fly, flying the line. It's got a trajectory that's supposed to go. It's got an envelope that's trying to fit between, and it pitches up or down and rolls around in order to stay inside the envelope. So what I'm tweaking is the envelope and also how much it can do to stay inside the envelope. Uh, I'm not increasing the pitch factor much, or at all actually, but I'm increasing the roll. Uh, so I went from a factor of 10 to a factor of 15. Uh, this isn't the max roll that it does. It isn't even getting to that. It's uh, the multiplier on the difference between our heading and the target heading. So there's our heading and a target heading. They, the difference gets subtracted, and then there's a multiplier on that to tell it how much to roll based on how far off it is in heading. And so I'm increasing that multiplier. We're not really getting to the limit as far as what its roll limit is. So increasing the multiplier gets us a little bit more in line with the target, hopefully. So anyway, with that tweak, uh, we will see how good it goes. Will we fly directly over it is what I'm hoping for. What we want to do is fly directly over it. Land on it would be great, but that's a lot to hope for. So here, the pitching down phase, and then the parachute deployment phase, and it goes like that. Uh, all this time, I've just been loading the save from Orbit, so I haven't tweaked the parachutes. Uh, I did a lot of other tests to get the fins right, to get the parachute timing uh, when in altitude they deploy correct, what speed I wanted them at. There's a lot of testing that goes before this point to make sure that the thing is stable, you know, except for the part where the parachutes deploy and throw it off. There have been times when I could deploy the parachutes and it didn't go unstable, uh, but that hasn't been happening recently. Uh, that usually happened when we were coming in a little bit faster. The faster we are, the more the control surfaces have a grip on things and you know they can have a higher pitch and the higher the pitch is, the better off the parachute deployment is. So basically, we are coming in slower now and part of that is the fact that we're landing at Ballast Marineris instead of somewhere higher up. Uh, higher up, we would be coming in faster and so that throws everything off. So here we are landing finally right on the edge of render range. My target was to be within render range because I'm going to be using simple logistics to be transferring resources between things. And so everything being in render range is the goal. And here we are landing. So, and we can see the base, obviously, but barely, right? So more work needs to be done, but that was the goal for now and I will tweak things, but it is satisfying to at least have gotten this far with a lot of effort. <laughs> so this little lander, uh, you might have noticed the drilling units on the side. It, it is a packed with an ISRU unit inside, and so the drills can go outside and it can refuel on the surface of Mars. That's one of its features. As far as little engine pods that turn to face down, I'm thinking of just having fixed engines that face down. It's got two engines in the tail as well, so it's got six engines, only four are for landing. And so I think I'll revise that element of it instead of having the turning engine pods, even though that's nice and fancy. But I'll think about that. Lots to do here, but this is a nifty little craft and it'll be nice to use it for Mars Adventures. 
So with that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.